quit, don't quit. Noodles, don't noodles. You are too concerned with what was and what will be. There's a saying, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Yo, what's going on people? Daniel here from the AK Mindset, bringing you a video, a discussion on Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, we taking a break from anime and manga for once. <laughs> but yeah, today I'm talking about the relationship between Tai Long and Master Shifu and the meaning of the dragon scroll and what it means to be the dragon warrior so yeah i hope you guys enjoy leave a like on the video if you like it and comment below with any thoughts you have on the film so yeah so the other day i was thinking about tai long's character and whether he was a hundred percent responsible for his actions that day when he started to while out and he tried to steal the dragon scroll and Shifu tried to confront him but he couldn't because he didn't have the resolve and Master Ugo had to step in and he got put in prison for 20 years and after thinking about it it didn't take me too long to realize that obviously he's not although I do believe he's responsible for his own actions because at the end of the day you have a personal responsibility above everything Master Shifu definitely has some responsibility in moulding Tai Long to become the person slash Snow Leopard that he turned out to be in the film. Tai Long states during the film It is because of your weakness. Obeying your master is not weakness. You knew I was the Dragon Warrior. You always knew. But when Ugwe said otherwise, what did you do? What did you do? Nothing! You were not meant to be the Dragon Warrior! That was not my fault! You were not meant to be the Dragon Warrior! That was not my fault! Not your fault? Who filled my head with dreams? Huh. Who drove me to train until my bones cracked? Who denied me my destiny? Not your fault? Who filled my head with dreams? Who drove me to train until my bones cracked. Who denied me my destiny? I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. The confrontation between Shifu and Tai Long is definitely one of my favorite scenes in the film. And that dialogue implies that Shifu, after he saw Tai Long's latent potential for Kung Fu, he ran him through the drills. He had him training day in day out he had his head inflated filling him with dreams talking about you gonna be the dragon warrior you it's you no one else no one else is better you're that guy and i feel like shifu was so proud of what tai long was becoming he failed to see what kind of negative influence his praise had on him i feel the mindset tai long developed was one of a sense of entitlement where he began to feel that becoming the dragon warrior was something that he didn't need to earn but it was something that he would just walk into kind of like an inheritance so when master ugwe denied him his so-called birthright and shifu had no other choice to accept it tai long he flew into a fury because he had been denied the only thing that he thought was his the thing that he had been led to believe was his right and i feel shifu's acceptance of this was seen as a betrayal for tai long because shifu was his father figure the one who was supporting him had a key role in his training and for him to directly go against what he had told him during his upbringing must have been a big slap in the face especially since he was the main proponent of him even entering the Kung Fu art. During their final confrontation, Master Shifu seems to, he seems to fail to realize his role in Tai Long's development into this antagonist we see in the film. 
he doesn't realize this i believe until tai long goes on his his little speech <laughs> best lines in the film where he says all i ever did i did to make was to make you proud and he's he's screaming at shifu he's like tell me how proud you are tell me that scene right there i feel when when tai long said that it's like it was like a cry shifu i don't want to say he was ignorant but he was turning away he didn't want to accept the reality i feel like he knew all along but he just didn't want to face it and once tai long had said it he had put it out in the air shifu had no other choice to acknowledge that it was his failure as a father as a mentor figure that had led him that had led tai long to become the way he was and even when he's acknowledged this it's a it's a shame because it's too late and Tai Long he hears the apology he hears I'm sorry but I feel 20 years in prison I don't think he was doing anything any good thinking in there I feel like he was just thinking about how when he gets out he's gonna he's gonna make sure Master Shifu and Uwe pay I feel like the grudge he had only grew stronger he probably his hatred grew every day he was inside that prison so when, even when he understands what Shifu's telling him, he still can't let it go because he can't get that time back and it's sad. And I just want to reiterate that Shifu, although he has an influence in Tai Long's road to becoming the antagonist, Tai Long still is responsible for becoming the evil guy we see because at the end of the day, it is your own personal responsibility. You can't shift the blame of what you do onto other people. Like, that's an important thing to remember. So, yeah. Next, I want to discuss what I think the movie means to me and what I took away after watching the film. One of the key lessons from the first movie is the importance of self-belief and self-understanding. The choice to have the dragon skull be empty is an interesting one and I like how the scene connects with what Poe's dad was telling us with in regards to his secret ingredient noodle soup. Come here, the secret ingredient is nothing. Huh? You heard me. Nothing. There is no secret ingredient. Wait, wait. It's just plain old noodle soup? You don't add some kind of special sauce or something? Don't have to. To make something special, you just have to believe it's special. Emphasizing when he says to make something special, you just have to believe it. And you could think it's kind of corny because, oh yeah, the, the power was inside you are long. But I feel like for a kid's film or a film aimed at a younger demographic, it's important to touch on these kind of things because if the dragon scroll had had something in it, had like the tips to become the dragon warrior, like the necessary steps, I don't think that was the correct message to be telling people because what I took from the scroll being empty and then when we see Poe's reflection in the scroll, I feel like what he was saying is because to get to that point where he was even allowed to take the scroll, he had to train. I'm not sure for how long. It could not have been too long, but he did have to train for a period of time to even be at the level to accept the scroll. I feel what the scroll was telling him is that you need to understand yourself and have a belief in your personal abilities. You need to be confident in what you can do and what you can't do. And you need to be able to understand yourself to see what your best attributes are. I feel like when you get the scroll, you look at the scroll and you see yourself, 
you look you're looking at not a finished product but someone in progress someone who is on their way to become the best martial artist or the best person in kung fu for this film i feel like when paul realized what his dad was telling him when he realized there's no secret ingredient that it was just an ordinary noodle soup the thing is it's not ordinary because the thing that makes it special is the person making it because he has the belief that when i'm making this noodle soup it's special because i'm the one making it i'm the guy if someone else made that soup it wouldn't be the same even if they made the same ingredients they might not understand because Poe's dad understands that and he can he can be confident because he's put the work in Poe's dad touches on something that is very important the idea of self-belief he has confidence in himself and understands what he needs to do to create the best noodle soup and this can be applied to the dragon warrior and the scroll after Poe receives this lesson from his dad he looks at the scroll and sees his reflection essentially hammering in the point that being the dragon warrior doesn't require any special skill any special tip externally but it does require the ability to understand yourself and having confidence in your abilities for me this makes me believe that anyone who's well trained in kung fu can become the dragon warrior as long as they understand what the dragon scroll is teaching them which brings me back to tai long as one tai long manages to steal the scroll and looks at it he doesn't understand the lesson because he's looking for that one step that fast track experience and even when the lesson is put in his face i feel he's too stuck in his ways he's not flexible in his thinking to understand that there's more to the scroll than just a power-up it can give you that he refuses to accept it and i think that's what separates him from poe because poe can understand that it's not just scrolls and stuff but yeah to conclude kung fu panda is a great film feel like as i've gotten older it's only gotten better there's a lot more things i've noticed as you do as you get older and i do have a much greater appreciation for what the film has taught me and brought to the film medium but yeah if you like the video like comment subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one